All right, more refined painting. Always refined painting. Enough already with the refined painting. And to get that that idea of finish, which you don't need so much for for your digital painting, but you do need for your final art project. You want to force yourself to go everywhere in the image and to really consider the, the finish on everything. And it's always good to have something to look at because I'll notice how they bring kind of raw canvas, raw white into it every once in a while too. So I'm gonna try just, I'm gonna just try to paint with this finishing layer with the same kind of energy that I did my initial sketch, right? Because that's kind of the magic of of art a lot of the time is the initial energy you put into the idea to the approach when you're not being super self-critical and it can be a real challenge to keep that going through the process but I want you to try I'm just stealing color for myself at this lower opacity, mixing it in with this wet brush. But also letting some of the, the crisp edges from underneath still come through where I think they're, they're helping. But by softening out some edges and keeping others, it feels more considered. Not just the default, you know, digital tools doing the decision making. moving fast, breaking things. When the computer starts to lag on you a little bit, that's when you save your work. And if you ever need to increase the performance of Photoshop, you can go to Preferences, Performance, and then you can scale up the amount of RAM that's used. So right now I'm at 80%. That's about as much as I want to use. I can push it up to maybe 85, but I wouldn't go beyond that. Otherwise, you might lose some of your, your finder capabilities of saving files while you're working. All right, but I'm definitely liking this finish more you know when i'm up close to it than just the refined paint layer alone and you can always just like put color in and then mix it out again 
It's if you're familiar with painting, it's really satisfying and very similar to pushing like wet oil paint around. And then there are of course dry brush, dry brushes as well. There's there are watercolor brushes that kind of absorb and don't aren't so fluid. You have so many options. And that's why I brought in that American illustration book so you can see so many so much illustration is done digitally. Illustration is my field of choice because illustrations are made to be reproduced and since everything goes to to print or to production whether it's screen or or print through a digital file now like even if I were to do a whole painting as an uh, a whole illustration campaign like the uh, poster for the original animated Disney Peter Pan movie was painted with oil paint on a door and then that door was brought to the print house. This is in the 50s or 60s. Can't quite remember. <laughs> but, but they had to photograph that oil painted door. And because it was oil paint, it had like a lot of shininess in certain parts. And they had to really work with lighting it so you didn't get those shines. And that's just a huge headache for the printers who then photograph it and then print from the photograph. Now, movie posters are all done digitally. We'll see examples of that when we, we look at our final projects. And that way, the digital file is, is just ready to go for to make print ready. But that means, in order to get those kind of oil painting effects that that Peter Pan artist liked, I have to understand the properties of digital painting and these different options we have for the brushes. And especially now that we have good tablets to use, we have a lot of good options. You can mix complementary colors, make everything seem a little bit more bright, more vibrant. Yeah, I'm liking this. It's good to try new things. So what are the big takeaways from digital painting? Use as many layers as you like, but try to limit your workflow. That's the, the kinds of tools you use and the order you use them, the steps you make. Try to limit it so you're mostly just using your brush tool instead of doing a lot of kind of technical fiddling around with different, different tools. In that way, it's very different than compositing. It's just so much more direct, which I appreciate for sure. And I've ignored the tail, so now I get to bring a finish to that. Soften certain edges, bring color in where you want it. Absurdity and association. Try to get rid of that self-critique as you're working. Not only is it more enjoyable, but you'll get better results.
All right, this leg. I'm getting there, getting close. Still have my references open. And still steal from them when needed. And remembering to reestablish some brighter colors because as you're doing so much mixing and blending, those colors can kind of get dull. And as I promised at the beginning of class, as we get into these final projects, it's a lot less about just following along and learning how to do certain techniques, and a lot more about kind of finding what speaks to you, what you want to learn, what you want to build, what you're interested in, in doing with these tools. Remember, you're just required to do either an animal or a portrait on a blank background. So don't worry about the background. I like just having blank white so I can actually paint white around it if needed. Right? But then you can always put a background in behind it later. It's one of the advantages of digital painting. And it's funny, I started with the parts I was most interested in, like the eye, but it kind of takes till the end so you finish out, you figure out your kind of tool settings and if you're really experimenting, you're going to find better solutions by the end. So then maybe you want to revisit some of those focal points. I think that's the favorite part of the painting right there. That's the finish I would like for all of it to have, but it would take time. It's all the kind of chaos of different layers and colors blending together. Ah. But it's got hints of it. So if you were able to find your own kind of unique approach to digital painting, then this was successful for you. Even if you don't finish it off by next class. What does it need? I'm kind of squinting. A little more contrast here, perhaps. As things slow down a bit, I'm going to save it. Stock of where I am. Like it when things are showing through the creases a little bit. That's the underpainting coming through. Okay, so now, is this finish helping? I think so. Right? It especially helps when you're viewing.